When working with the Doppler equation, it's worth noting some really important tips. And by watching some of these examples, you can almost guarantee the right result every time. The Doppler equation can be very tricky to work with, but if you practice with us and remember the steps, it's actually quite easy. We'll look at several different examples, all to do with sound, and even suggest how you should tackle examples when light may be involved. Let's begin. You'll need a calculator, pen, and lots of attention. This is a simple question. It's like the one we used in the previous lesson. The difference here is that the medium of the wave is water. A submarine receives a wave of frequency of 355.93 Hz. From information in the computer, the submarine knows that the source of frequency is 350 hertz. Is the ship approaching or going away and how fast is it going? First, we see that the observed frequency is higher than the expected source of frequency. That means that the ship, the source in this case, is getting closer. The reason this is very important is because it influences the equation that we use to work out and substitute the numbers into. So, to make the frequency higher, the bottom of the equation must get smaller, so we use minus. Substituting the values in, we must be careful to use the speed of sound in water of 1,500 meters per second. The frequency of the observed sound and the source also go in. It's a tricky sum, but this allows us to manipulate the velocity of the source to the left. The velocity works out to positive 25 meters per second. I'm sure you can see how that information might be very valuable. Our last example is the hardest. This speed trap uses the Doppler effect to find the speed of a car as it travels. It measures one frequency as the car approaches and another when the car has passed. Both the frequency of the source and the speed of the source are not known. What has happened is that the trap listens to the first frequency as 1079.37 Hz. The second frequency heard is 931.5 Hz. So, try to imagine how you might solve a question with two unknown variables and two different scenarios. If you guessed, we might use simultaneous equations to find these two variables. Oddly, we don't even need the frequency of the source, just the speed. Remember, to make predictions and select the correct equation and sign to match what is available. For the approaching source, the minus sign must be used for the source velocity. For the source that is leaving or moving away, we use the plus sign for the V source. So, we start by substituting the equation for both the approach and when the car has passed. The speed of the sound in air, the frequency received, leaving only the frequency of the source and the speed of the source to be found. We've manipulated the two equations to equal to frequency of the source so that we can make them equal to each other. So let's do that. Now that the two equations are equal, we can manipulate them. 
First, let's drop the common denominator. Then, isolating the velocity of the source, or the car, leaves us with a car that is travelling at 17 metres per second. This looks really complex, but stay with us. You need to see these as just really long sums when we move around parts of the equation, like building blocks.